<laughs> Hello, everybody. If indeed anybody is watching, is anybody watching? Oh, yeah. Quite a few people are watching. Hello. And, um, and welcome to the stream. I think I'm live. I'm not actually sure, but I think I'm live. Um, please um, pop a little message in in the chat <laughs> if you can see me and if you can hear me. I'm actually astonished that I've got this running at all today. More more than a little. If you can see. Me. Oh, wrong one. More than a little astonished, and the reason is. Because today is the first ever live stream from the new studio. So I've got leads everywhere. I think I've got everything plugged in and I think I've got everything on. But I'm not going to pretend that I'm ready for the stream yet. But I nearly am. So please bear with me. Oh, I'm live. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Amy. Yes, this is my new studio, which I love very, very much. Um, <clears throat> hello, Renee. Nice to hear from you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, it's chilly, chilly autumn day here, so I've got the fire on. And also, unfortunately, I get the most beautiful light coming through this window. Can you see me? I don't know if you can see me. Hopefully you can. I get the most beautiful light coming through this window. It's actually west facing, so the sun has gone down behind the trees over there. So uh, that's the only reason I haven't got actual direct sunlight in here. Um, but the light is going now. It's actually starting. It's we're we're properly into twilight. The gloaming. Anyway, how are we doing? Yeah, Sean. Yeah, this is quite a spacious room. The only problem with it is the ceiling height. You know, if you think that I'm five foot six, five foot seven, and on tippy toes I can touch the ceiling, which means that it's not great for my easel because my easel is one of those uh, kind of basic ones that has the paint tray attached to the central post. So if I want to bring the paint tray up to have my board on it, as I normally do, I have to move the whole post up. So I've got the post up as high as it will go. And the paint tray isn't high enough. I need the paint tray about here. So I've chopped up my board on another another canvas to hold it up, which is really annoying, right? So the only way I'm going to be able to get my paint tray high enough is if I saw about a foot off the top of my easel post. Really frustrating. The other thing that hasn't worked out so far today is that normally I have a room light, a nice big room light, photographer's light, on me when the camera's on me. And um, I've lost it. Because <laughs> we just moved house and I've no idea where most of my stuff is. <laughs> yeah. uh, hello, Lee. Yeah, the fireplace is gorgeous, right? The problem is it's so cosy in here. It's tempting just to sit by the fire. So the first thing is, oh, here's my monster scale. The reason I've got this stuck on my painting is because I use it to focus the camera so you can see that I'm still halfway through the setup for today and also I've actually got the wrong painting on. I've got a painting that I'm halfway through which doesn't want to come off come off don't break yes because I want to finish that another time so you can see how I attach my paintings painting panels. So what I've got here is a fresh ampersand gesso board panel. It's a 9 by 12. So I'm going to stick this one up. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'm going to actually be able to find everything I need to paint with. Um, so apologies if today is like even a little bit more shambolic than usual, if that's possible. it's because I'm still looking for stuff basically we haven't really finished properly finished moving in yet so this is I'm just sticking this up with 
blue tongue. So I've got what you can hope, hopefully you can see, like I've got one um, light here. That's just off the camera shot, I think. It's the same as this light over here. So these are newer 660 LEDs with diffusers on, and I've got them just on the white. And that's just really to light this. So yeah, the, <clears throat> the reference photo is up. That's the right reference photo. That's what I'm going to be having a go at painting today. My screen is here. So if you see me over here talking to the wall, looks like I'm talking to the wall. I'm actually looking at my screen, which is that way. Um, that shot was actually taken with a pot in this window here, which is my only north light window. And it's very, very small and it's too small to paint by. But um, makes really beautiful light. Hello, Aphrodite. I would have guessed you were from Greece. Steve Temkin, good to see you. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll find the I'll find the room light like, next time we move. No, I'll tell you what, Steve. I am never moving house again, ever, not ever. No way. It was a nightmare. And um, thank you, Janice. Yeah, I think this is lovely. Oro says, are you going to hang any paintings above the fireplace? Uh, do you know what? I hadn't even thought about it. Um, yeah, probably. Probably. But I kind of like this. When I first came in this space, it was, it was really um, empty. And I loved it, you know. First thing I need to do is oil out this panel. So this is my little... Oh, you know what? I haven't set up the, the palette camera. This is going to take me a second. Shouldn't take too long. Is it working? Yes. So then I can. Normally I have this showing as well. So let's see if I can get this up quickly. See, so you can tell I'm a professional, right? <laughs> By the utter chaos. Uh, did it work? I don't know. I think I have to... Would you rather see the palette or would you rather see the studio? I don't think I can have both. I don't think there's enough room for both. See, if I take the studio off... Where is it? Can't find it. What did I just do? Oh yeah, there's the palette. Well, that's something. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Hello, Linda. Nice to see you. The palette. We have the palette. Um, <clears throat> I could probably, I could probably get the studio like in the corner, like really small. But it would be so small, you. I don't think you'd really be able to see it. That's better, right? So now I need to find my linseed oil. This looks very much like my oil. That is my linseed oil. Then I need to find my turps. This looks like my turps. Is it my turps? Yes, it is. Well, that's not a bad start. And then I need to find some... Uh, well, I need some paint, don't I, really? Um, lead white. Every time I say lead white like that, I think of... Um, the girl with the pearl earring, the film, you know, where um, oh, my palette is a little bit, a little bit messy. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit scatterbrained at the moment. I need my raw umber, raw umber, and I need some black. Have I got any black? Yes, I've got some black. Um, sorry, I know I'm halfway through an unfinished thought. I'm just making sure that something else is working. Yeah, that looks all right. Um, the girl with the pair of earring, where Vermeer says, you know, um, Greece is, is there and she's getting, she's helping him out in the studio and he says, lead white from the cupboard. 
in this harsh manner. And every time I say lead right, I think of that. Um, ooh, I think we might be ready to do some painting. It's a bit rash, isn't it? I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here. This is actually the first time, as you probably gathered as well, that I've painted since I've, we've been here. We've been in this house for maybe about three weeks. And I had originally hoped to be up and running much sooner. I've lost momentum, which bothers me. Um, but I also, I mean, you know, who likes moving house? Nobody, right? But also I got completely exhausted. Instead of doing the sensible thing and hiring a, a removals firm, I thought I can do it, no problem. So of course I ran myself into the ground and then I got a bug which I couldn't shake. And I'm just kind of recovering now. So I'm back up and running again. So this is lead white from the cupboard. This is actually Rublev lead white number one in linseed oil. Very, very lovely. Raw umber. Oh, and the other thing I've noticed, like lots of things are going to strike me now that I'm actually doing a stream that are different, that aren't going to work so well. So the, the first thing that I've noticed is before, in my old studio, I could look across the room to where the computer was and I could read the comments. But this, in this space, the computer is basically twice as far away from me and I can't see the comments. I can't see them. What am I going to do? I'm going to have to keep walking over and check. Hello, April. Thank you. What a lovely thing to say. Thank you. Palette knife. Oh, uh, do I know where the palette knife is? Yes. Here's the palette knife. This is going way too well. Let's face it. Right, I'm going to mix up a medium value um, lead white raw umber. So this is just like a value underpainting I'm doing today. I'm starting this subject off. I don't know if this will be the final crop that we'll use in the workshop. Oh, I should say as well for people who, who don't know that I, uh, I guess a lot of the people who are here will know already, but I've got a workshop online workshop starting soon. It is open now for registration in which I'm going to be, it's called Painting the Poetic Workshop. And the point of this workshop is taking atmospheric images like this reference photo that I'm working from today, but then moving beyond the reference photo into creating something which is more your own. Um, through glazing. Let's have some more white in that. And oh, no, actually that's probably all right. Sanding the surface and scraping, creating texture, softening, working in layers, multiple layers. So this is a way that I've been painting a lot more lately. And um, I have begun the last workshop that I did, I I've begun to teach it. And um, and I had my heart in my mouth a little bit because I wasn't sure if it was going to come off because it was a new thing for me teaching that. And um, actually, I think it went really, really well. Uh, and uh, got some really good feedback from people who were on that workshop. So this is a varnish brush. I'm using this one because I can't find the one I normally use. Actually, I don't know where most of my brushes are. I've got some though, probably enough. So this is linseed oil and turps. Has a slightly, I would say it's probably two thirds oil, slightly runny because, um, oh God, it feels good to be painting again. Even just putting oil on a panel just to have a brush in my hand, God, that feels good. That's about to fall off the board though, which would not be so good. God, I missed this. Let me sort this out. I'm a bit worried my panel's going to fall off. 
Right, so <clears throat> I've just kind of painted that on roughly. And then I'm going to work it back. Someone tell me what thought I was halfway through then. I can't remember what it was before I got distracted by it. the smell of oil and terps and the brush in my hand. And oh dear, it's like, um, it feels like coming home. Finally, using my studio space for what it's intended. So the, the light in this reference photo is is the, the light that I get in this studio during the day, and it is just sublime. I'm very, very lucky. I was worried because I have one east-facing and one west-facing window. The big window that I'm going to be using mostly is west-facing, but the good thing about that is that I, I found... Um, well, for one thing, it makes some quite interesting light in here as, as the sun starts to come in the window, which might be interesting to take some reference photos to paint from. But also, um, <clears throat> when the sunlight does come in, it goes into the back of the room, like where the fireplace is. So it actually doesn't make that much difference to the light on the easel. Just roughly paint that in. So I have a lot longer uh, daylight working time than I thought. What did I pour in my tin? Lindsay Doyle and Terps. Yes, Lynn, that's exactly what it was. Lindsay Doyle and Terps. Yeah, <clears throat> two thirds oil, roughly. I mean, roughly. I, I, I vary that depending on um, how far through the painting I am or, you know, which way the wind's blowing. Um, you know, now, <clears throat> that's all I need to start with, really. I want to begin to just try to imagine. I wish I had a bigger panel. This subject feels like it wants a bigger panel. This one is nine by 12 inches. That's the other thing I haven't really found yet. Slightly frustrating is all of my uh, prepared panels. <laughs> I, I know I've got a lot more, basically, than I've found so far, hanging around somewhere. So let's have a look and see what we can do. So I'm thinking about beginning to wipe this out. So I don't want to be thinking about the objects that are involved in this painting at all at this stage. I just want to be thinking about light and dark shapes and I can change the composition a bit if I want to. I think I like it, so I probably won't. So I'm just going to start wiping out the light shapes. So this is like the main the main light shape is over here. The reason I like to do it this way, <clears throat> with this kind of wipeout method, is that it, um, it really helps you to deal only with light and shadow shapes to begin with. That pot actually doesn't come very high up, probably slightly over halfway. So the top of it would be about there. And it's right next to this. I'm just trying to get light and dark shapes in the right place. This is the window. <clears throat> I just think um, painting started this way have a kind of a, a magic to them. It's I think it's it's partly the texture, but I think it, it may also be that we kind of not sure if that's in the right place yet. We'll see. It seems to me to um, 
to be a, a kind of a, a shortcut to to a, a kind of mental processing that we need to use as painters, which is oh, found some brushes. That's handy. Yay. <clears throat> which is to see the world as shapes of light and shadow, which is not a simple thing to do. And uh, I think probably one of the, the kind of core skills of painting realistically is being able to see everything as in terms of light and shadow shapes and, and carving out the light shapes like this out of a mid value really seems to help with <clears throat> visually processing things that way and helping you to stay focused on that way of seeing. You see, to me, this has already got something nice about it. You know, I know it's barely started, but if I just went in and started painting this, especially if I started drawing it first, I just don't think it would have the same expressive quality to it that this has. I need a better easel. This one wobbles about a lot as well. I've forgotten about that. I'm going to get a better easel. That's what I'm going to do. It's ridiculous that I've I'm still struggling on with this rubbish old easel. And I haven't even got myself a proper easel yet. This is like a student easel. I've always thought, you know, I'm a bit of a skin flint, to be honest with you. I've always thought, no, it's fine. But it's really not fine. It's rubbish and I need to change it. If nothing else, I need to change it for one that has a, a, an independent um, post, you know, so I can move it up and down more easily. The drawing is very out at the moment. It should be lower down. But also, um, I think uh, paintings can come together quite quickly like in this way as well. My pot is a little bit fat. So this workshop that I've got coming up is basically teaching this method of starts. We're going to, this is one of the images we'll probably be using actually in the workshop to paint from. I have a bunch of images, not all of them backlit like this. This is, I wanted to try something a little bit different with this one that I think is going to, I think is going to lend itself to this technique. So I'm trying not to um, to see the edges of anything, if if that makes sense. I'm trying just to look at things as as shapes of light and shadow, so that I can hopefully stay in this. And a way of visual processing. Actually, funnily enough, I find it kind of hard to. Um, I find it harder to talk when I'm doing this than I do when I'm doing like most other kinds of painting. I'm just whittling away at this shape until I hopefully get it a little bit closer to what it should be. And the values in the window are extremely close, very light and extremely close. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge, but it's coming, I think, already. It's beginning, the light is beginning to show. It's beginning to get that kind of You see, I, th I think for me, this image is already 
a little poetic. There is something already poetic about the light, but I, I'm going to work on this piece like over the next, I don't know, probably this one and another one, maybe one or two more. I'm planning Now I'm, I'm up and running again. I just want to stream, I want to paint and stream. So I'm going to be working on this one over the next two, three weeks, probably one or two others as well, because they need to dry in between. Uh, whilst I'm working out like the light in the studio and how I want to work with it. So people know me probably from, I mean, you all know me from, uh, if you've done any learning with me before, from doing very, um, doing a lot of color focus stuff and flowers, um, still life, very, using uh, Munso for mixing, so, uh, you know, with an emphasis on um, accurate color. Um, which I'm not, uh, I'm not moving away from per se. I am, uh, I will still be teaching that because I think it's so useful. And obviously I still have my color course, but I am, I guess it's partly because my own approach to painting is changing a little bit. I, I'm moving a little bit beyond, um, or perhaps away from is a better way to put it, a, a kind of a close accuracy. And I've recently found that working with this kind of um, more expressive way of painting has allowed me, it's allowed me to find something that I've been looking for for a long time. And um, I wasn't sure that it would be a good thing to teach at first, but I've also I've found that even people who were on the last workshop when I began to teach it, who were um, at an earlier stage of their painting journey, got something out of it too. And I think, you know, you can get to a point where it can become difficult to break out of a process if you, you you can come to rely on something too much that's a little bit of oil on this we'll try and refine a couple of these things a little um i personally am uh, not really using monster a lot now and i think it's like anything it, it it's incredibly useful to learn about how light, how color behaves in light and shadow. I don't think there's a better way to learn that personally. But like anything, you know, it, I mean, that's fine as far as it goes, but if you want to find something else, if you want to start to find something, you know, a more personal approach, let's say, more uh, expressive, then perhaps it's good to start looking at other possibilities. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I've also found that with teaching it, that um, people have been getting some, honestly, I, I mean, I think, I, uh, you know, it dreadful, sounds dreadfully like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but some pretty astonishing results. What are we doing? The shape of this pot is still very out. But the overall feeling of the backlight is coming in. Which I'm pretty happy about. Is the 
dark area here. So backlight, I mean, a lot of what I've, I've been focusing on for a long time with my own painting is what they call form light, which is like you got three quarters, two thirds to three quarters of the form is um, is in light and, you know, the, the rest is in shadow. And you have your various modeling factors and um, all of that is, I mean, this is obviously very different. Kind of lighting. Dissolve this right hand edge because there is a sliver of light on the right hand edge. I'm going to lift up some more of this paint because. <coughs> But even though, uh, I mean, that, it may seem that it's a, it's a kind of a complex lighting situation. It's basically, it, it comes back down to light and shadow shapes. It always comes down to light and shadow shapes. And if you get those right, you know, that feeling does start to come. And anything can be changed like so this is going to be there's going to be multiple layers of this painting and even though color wise it's very simple you could say um, the the layers are going to give it more depth I won't really be able to handle these values that well, I don't think, until I get the paint out. And I can be a little bit more exacting with it. At the moment, a lot of these values are darker than they need to be in the, in the end. But it's coming. Let me catch up with the comments. Oro says, I love, I love that peak of light between the edge of the wall and vase. Between the edge of the wall and the vase. Yeah, where the, where the cast shadow is, right? That bit there? Yeah. Jenny says, French or English farmhouse? Looks lovely. It's an English farmhouse. It's in actually just outside the Cotswolds now. I've just come down off the Cotswolds es escarpment into the Severn Valley. The Severn is a major river that runs um, nearby. And I don't know how old this farmhouse is, but it's been built in two parts, and I'm in the oldest part, which is why I have these like two foot thick walls. And. Um, you know, it's just amazingly gorgeous. And there is a barn. So we, we, we're renting this farmhouse and there's a, there's a, a farmyard. On the, at the back of the farmhouse and on the other side of the farm of the farmyard is a barn. Probably about, <clears throat> um, I don't know, maybe 30 to 50 feet across from the house. And this barn is a two story barn and it's uh, an old boy who lives locally was walking by the other day when I was out the front looking at the pool, <laughs> which gives the pool farm its name. Gorgeous. And he told me that that old barn is, he thinks maybe, the, he's obviously a history buff, he thinks maybe the oldest brick-built structure in Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire is the county. Um, so, you know, if that's true, I mean, it looks really, really old then, you know, I think that probably means something's wrong. I've got an angle out. That probably means that the farmhouse is very old too. And it certainly looks old and it feels old. Um, I don't know how old. 
And I don't think it's as old as that barn, but I think it is probably pretty old. Amazing, huh? And, uh, you know, we, we rent this farmhouse from a charity called the Ernest Cook Trust, and they do good things in the world. They bring city kids out to the countryside to do like forest goody type stuff, I think, and, and hang out on farms and see animals and all that kind of thing. You know, I really like what they do. Um, and, you know, they may be renovating that old barn. So, you know, there's a chance that the ceiling height might cease to be a problem for me at some point if I can, if I can swing that barn as an art studio. Oh, that would be amazing. Because you know what? It's got north-facing windows <laughs> on one side. It also has a big west window as well. I mean, they're just holes at the moment. They're not, you couldn't call them windows really at the moment. How am I doing? Where are we? All I wanted to do is basically get this roughed in today. And I think I'm probably not far off that. Now, just with the wipeout, you know, and then I'll let this dry. Because this is the first layer, um, it will dry pretty much overnight. It's mostly, I mean, it's raw umber and black, a little bit of lead white, which also dries quickly. So this will dry fast, you know. Um, so I may be able to work on this again tomorrow, or I may start another one tomorrow. Probably going to do another stream tomorrow. Yeah, so look out over the next couple of weeks. I'm, my goal is to stream every day. Will I manage it? I do not know, but I will try. Um, just to make it a few. So I want the drawing to be like reasonably, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be reasonably accurate. Because I can choose to change things later, but I want to start with a, a strong foundation. And I, I would guardedly say I think I do think it's it's coming. That foundation is beginning to come. Let me catch up with some more comments. Sorry. So Jenny says, "Is this from life or a reference photo today?" It's from the reference photo that that's on the side there. Let me stick, I've actually got, um, can I find it? I'm sharing the reference photo to see if I can find it. Yeah, I'm going to stick a, stick a link in. Feel free to grab it. Yeah, the window is in the studio, but um, don't forget I'm in the UK, so it's actually dark now. It's dark. Hello, Carol. Hello, Carol from Quebec. What time is it in Quebec? Thank you. It's a kiss. That's a very nice thing to say. Christina from Arizona. Yeah, I bet it is hot there. It's, it's cold here, though. Um, this, the panel is a, it's an ampersand gesso board panel. It's basically a hard board panel. And Kelly, yes, I am. I'm absolutely loving the home and studio. We have an orchard out the back as well. Um, like a two acre orchard. And we have another bit of land, which is basically scrub, scrub land at the moment, on which we're going to install some chickens. And, um, and the polytunnel and start growing the food and have this as like a little i don't know we kind of imagine i mean this place is so beautiful and there's so much space here have it a little place where people can come and um hang out maybe you know other people grow stuff to friends have a friend who's very up on permaculture and would like to um, compare notes with her and her family. They're good friends. And there's there's two more barns as well. That, I mean, it could potentially be studios at some point if somebody else wanted to have a studio. It would be really nice if this, you know, in my mad dreams when I'm kind of sitting by the fire and, I, you know, the kids have gone to bed and I'm, I'm dreaming. I imagine this is a, 
a little community of artists and artisans we could have here. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's my farmhouse, so. But you never know, especially if some of the kids who came out from the city could come and see, you know, art and craft being made here. I think that would be pretty special. Pretty special. I think I'm, I've gone pretty much as far as I want to go with this today. I may go a little bit further later, but I think I'm pretty much there. And also, my eldest boy is home from school, and today is his birthday. So I have to go and make his birthday dinner because it's tradition in our house. Two things, when it's your birthday, one, you get cake for breakfast. And the other thing is you get to choose whatever you want for dinner. And he wants lasagna and I cook the lasagna in our house. So I have to go and make his dinner very soon because he'll be a hungry lad. Did I just destroy the form of that? Maybe, but not too much. So I'm going to soften all of this a little bit. Just whip over it because I don't want any hard edges. I want to keep that life and expression in it. Just flick over it a little bit. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do with this after it's dried, I'm going to sand it and create some texture and scrapes and scratches and make it more lively. Um, and then I will um, paint over it again, oil it out, <clears throat> paint over it again, perhaps with glazes. Uh, I don't really know where this painting is going to go yet. I imagine um, the window has a lot of texture in it, which I want to bring in. And I'm imagining doing that with... Um, with actually some quite thick paint, but we'll see how it comes. Hello, Olaf. Yeah, it is lovely. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Hello, Brenda. Good to see you. Suzanne, good to see you. Ambitious to stream every day, Oro says. Yeah, probably, but you know, we'll see. When you finish this, put it in our monotone challenge in the still life group. It's our quarterly topic. Nice. Nice. Okay, I will try. Um, message me so that I don't forget. <clears throat> I think there is, um, I, I, mean, I can't really talk to Kathy who says, is there sound? And so, yes, there is. <laughs> because she won't hear me. Eric says, please also share what brand of brushes and oil paints are you using? Almost always Michael Harding oils. Um, and brushes that tend to be like this. What's this? This is a god, it's so old, I don't know. It just says made in England on it. <clears throat> Handover AS Handover Limited. I mean, it's just a, a soft, fat watercolor wash brush. This is a Cornelison Hog uh, flat S uh, series 42, size 6. Um, this is a varnish brush, the writing as well. Oh, no, it's, it's a gilder, a glider. Oh, it says glider by Amiga, made in Italy. I like Amiga brushes. They're good, actually. And this is a Rosemary's Ivory Long Flat, which I'm, I've got this out because it's very springy and sharp, so it's good for doing little, you know, getting little bits if you want a little bit of something a little bit sharp to bring something out. It's quite good for that. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Um, oh, the last thing I'm going to do before I go is... Uh... Hello, Gail. Thank you. Oh, there's quite a few messages I haven't caught up with yet. Hello, cow. Are there actually cows in your town, and is that why it's called Cowtown? Lee says, could you ever teach groups in your studios? I don't know if I ever will do that. I have done it before. Maybe one day. This room is not big enough, um, so I don't know. Maybe one day. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Thank you, Aphrodite. Yeah, birthday week. He's going to have a birthday week. Carmen, hello. It's a long time since I've seen you. Nice to see you. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So I've got this workshop coming up, which is um, going to start probably in about three weeks. Um, so since you're on the stream with me, I'm going to share a link where you can find out a little bit more about it if you would like to, which also has 
Shh, don't tell anyone. 20% discount on the price. But anyway, have a, have a look at that and that will tell you what it, this workshop is going to be about. I mean, it's going to be about this kind of thing that I'm doing now. You know, these, this kind of work. This actually came together um, a little quicker than I thought it was going to. I think my pot is way too big and I may have to cut it down because it should only be... Um, no, maybe it's all right. What do you think? I'm not sure. I think it's come a little bit too high up and I'm going to have to make it smaller, which I can actually do just by at the sanding stage. So I can redraw any of this at the sanding stage if I want to. I think I've let it come. I don't think it should be much above halfway up the panel, you know, so I, I think it's probably like 15% bigger than it needs to be and I need to bring it down a little bit, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go and sort my, my uh, young fella's dinner out. Uh, thank you very much for coming, everybody. Um, shortish stream today, considering. Um, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow. We'll see how things go. Uh, probably a little bit early, about four o'clock, and then I can show you the studio in daylight. How pretty it is. Okay, thanks very much, everyone, for coming, and I'll see you soon. Bye, thanks.